How's it going, everybody? This is Rob of Novacast, back with some more of uh, reading Onision's crappy book. This is chapter 10 of that book. So, without further delay, uh, let's go and get started, shall we? <clears throat> Good thing for me, I also have my... I've been drinking, like, nothing, nothing involving the book or anything, but... To kind of put me in a good mood, I actually have a bottle of freaking uh, orange vanilla Coca-Cola. Oh my gosh, I freaking love this stuff. It's so good. Alright. Um, okay, chapter 10. The alien was prepared this time. He pulled out, or pulled one of my eyes out. I tried to scream, my mouth was stuck open, my vocal cords were paralyzed. With my remaining eye, I tried to get a look at the alien as I yelled inside my own mind, suffering slightly in the world around me. The alien looked healed, maybe it was a different alien whose eyes didn't explode, but it seemed like, or seemed this one was trying to take my eye take an eye for an eye no he we it whatever it is put my eye back in but it felt different my eye felt a warmth to warmth at its stem at its at the stem okay the alien reached forward and pulled my other eye with seemingly no resistance I could see with my freshly replaced eye in seemingly the same way no blur 2020 no I guess just 20 vision after inspecting and touching my eye in a few areas it was also returned to my head the creature seemed to be in a hurry immediately it thrust its hand into my chest pulled out my heart or so it looked like my heart I have no real understanding of my own anatomy. I screamed in my head again. I knew the alien could hear me. I must have looked like a fool with a mouth stuck open or with my mouth stuck open and nothing coming out. Just standing there frozen, a gaping hole in my chest. I lost consciousness, a happy voice. Good morning, good morning, good morning too. Shut up mom, I screamed abruptly. Uh, coming out my sleep Greg don't talk to me like that my mom yelled only to be interrupted again mom my chest is bleeding I yelled I immediately immediately my mom ran out grabbed my pop and before I knew it we were in an urgent care facility waiting for the doctor to decide if I'm worth his or her time I blinked out completely in the truck or a truck ride there so much of my life felt unfathomable now seriously why use the occasional big words it makes no sense why was I being tortured what did the alien do to me this time and who could I tell about this without being sent to a mental institution haha <laughs> Dan you your face is turning green my sister Joanna gestured across from me in the waiting room she could make fun but we both knew or know she wouldn't have come with my mom and Papa unless she was also concerned I just glared at my sister and rolled my eyes in a slightly amused manner I wasn't in much pain I just didn't want to ignore a chest wound for the sake of common sense I got to the doctor's examination room after sitting in the waiting room for four hours I guess my uh, guess I guess chest bleeding wasn't a huge priority for them after an additional 30 minutes of waiting a nurse came in after a bunch of mundane questions and left or asked me a bunch of mundane questions and left another 15 minutes doctor came in he lifted up my shirt and scoffed 
then left the room after a few generic questions about my sleep behavior and even gave me a speech about self-harm. I was confused about all this but became clear he had concluded I had done this to myself either consciously or unconsciously. The wound on my chest had already dra uh, dried. No stitches were required. Apparently the alien had done either a great job making it look like I hurt myself or a bad job simply cleaning up my wound entirely. I mean it stuck its fingers through my skin before without a mark. Maybe it did leave a mark this time. As we left the urgent care my sister indicated that she wanted to drive. My mom laughed at the idea as if as she was nowhere near old enough yet. My papa remained in our truck the entire time we were inside. Apparently while I was getting looked at he got fish and chips. I held myself to chips. Everything on the road home seemed normal. My head was leaned on the passenger window out of boredom. My sister was on the other side of the back seat asleep you know, or on her window. Everything felt so typical till we pulled off the main road onto our gravel road. From seemingly nowhere, a man in a small black pickup truck collided with the middle of our truck. Me being immediately on the other side of the door, he T-boned. I flew back in a full-on slam against my sister. My mom's window shattered. My papa was completely unaffected bes aside from a piece of shattering glass scraping his face as it flew past. Without hesitation, the man who hit us clearly in a daze screamed at us to see if we were okay. But despite how hard he hit us, we were not people he should have been concerned with. No one else seemed to notice it but my, but his girlfriend or whoever she was who was sitting in the passenger seat of his car was clearly dead. She did not glow to my eyes. That ability is was clearly gone. But I felt a cold in her that I did not feel about anyone else around me. I didn't realize it till this moment. Maybe it was because I, w I surrounded myself with the living and there was no inconsistency that stood out in this new sensation yet in my chest when I looked at the woman slammed against the black truck's dashboard. I felt nothing but a silent still cold. Are you okay? I'm sorry, where did you come from? Oh man. The man yelled at us in the large orange vehicle as we all recovered. Alright, my papa looked back to me. Daniel, are you hurt anywhere? I replied, my chest is bleeding again, but I think I just ripped a scab back, the scab back open. Meanwhile, Joanna was sitting, just sitting there wailing in horror out of my ear. Apparently a piece of glass had somehow found its way into her ear canal. Let me help you. I'm sorry. Screamed the man and shatter outside the shattered wi window. Dude, your girlfriend is dead. Worry about her. I felt the focus of the most everyone involved. Oh, wait. Let me read that again. I felt the focus of most everyone involved suddenly shift to me in a hor horribly uncomfortable way. The driver in the black truck muttered confusion under his breath and looked back at his girlfriend. He saw she was hunched forward and began screaming her name. My family kept looking back and forth at me, then at the man in the little black truck trying to wake his girlfriend up. I muttered, she's not going to wake up, she's dead. My mom replied, Daniel, we get it. My papa added, 
You guys should walk home. I'll deal with the police and everything. None of us were in the mood to deal with any more waiting rooms or doctors that that day we walked down the gravel hill to our home to self-medicate that night over dinner my papa was looking at me funny I asked what's up he replied how did you know the woman was dead I answered I did she look dead my papa answered me no she looked unconscious I looked down at my plate I was abducted by an alien. I've been abducted a lot. I think they put stuff inside me. I think I can do things or know things now. My papa immediately rolled his eyes and laughed at himself. When you want to tell me what was going through your head, why you sounded so confident, come let me know, okay? He said as he stood up and gave his food to our dog. I let out a sigh. That was the exact reaction I expected. I followed up my last statement. That was the chest wound I had. I think they ripped out my heart and I don't know. My papa replied from a distance now as he closed the bedroom door. Okay, good night. I looked back at those remaining at the dinner table. My sister was staring at me. What? You're an idiot. Someone died and you're joking around. I let out a big sigh and replied, You're right. I'm an idiot. Weeks later, I discovered something new about myself on the playground. Something that probably ruined a few people's lives. I'll talk about it later, though. The way he ends these chapters is so fucking weird. I don't think it's something I see often. In stories and, and all that. Alright. Um, that was chapter 10 of this horrible, horrible book. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Truly really appreciate it. If you have anything to say, leave in the comments down below. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. This is Rob of Novacast signing off. Have a good one. And take care. Peace.